natural imperfections. This painting is about a very personal journey, my journey with scoliosis and my spinal fusion surgery, which naturally led to a huge scar on my back. If you want to know more about the journey, I have a scoliosis story time on my channel. Coming back to this painting, the idea for this painting came into my mind almost two years back when I was researching for my IB visual arts. I came across a painting by Frida Kahlo titled The Broken Column. The painting almost made me feel like I'm not alone and understood and it also made me see my own experience in a totally different light. Frida's painting inspired me to paint my own experience with an intention of inspiring someone who is going through the same or something similar. I have included elements in this painting that symbolize love, strength, healing and many other emotions that I needed or I felt during this experience. As I've already posted this painting on my Instagram, I can say without a doubt that it is inspiring other people and providing them a space of comfort and I hope that it does the same on here as well. I will talk more about the intention behind creating this painting later in the video. So for now, here's the process. I began with the preparation of the surface of the canvas. Now if you're wondering why I'm doing so, I completely understand. I myself have started canvas prep with my last two paintings. So one of the main reasons why I prepare my canvas is to improve the painting's longevity. Since priming the canvas helps the oil paint adhere better to the surface, preventing it from peeling off over time. It also gives a better flow when working and an even surface. For the best results, sand the surface of the canvas after every layer of gesso. I didn't do that since I wanted some textural qualities in my work. Right now, I am toning the surface of the canvas with bright orange so that no white patches of the canvas are visible later and then I added an additional layer for texture and covered it with acrylic paint. I then started with the first layer of the back. I worked in two layers since the first would establish the structure and the second one could focus more on the tones of the flesh. Talking more about the structure of the back, when I made the digital version of this painting two years back, I remember feeling slightly insecure about it and covering it up with wildflowers as much as I could. But these past two years have been an incredible journey of growth. I realized this painting was about so much more than just a scar. It was about embodying my entire journey over the past five years. The process of loving myself again, overcoming insecurities, the strength I needed, the source of the strength and courage, the pain and a lot more that I cannot describe with words. Imperfections, in quotes to be specific, and especially sudden changes in our bodies is something we might struggle to accept initially, and that is extremely okay. As I quite often say, it is a journey, not a destination. I, even after five whole years, sometimes feel a sense of loss over my fused spine. Yes, me, who made an entire painting about embracing it. As someone who was quite passionate about dancing before my surgery, now not being able to do most of the dance moves sometimes gets to me and if I'm being honest, I have quite literally dropped dancing. Working on that will be a quite different journey. I'm still figuring out what I can and cannot do and if I fully enjoy it. Here is a little moment of self-appreciation. 
not in a narcissistic way but in a cute and uplifting way i who often is scared of experimenting decided to put texture in the background and i am so happy with the way it turned out the texture almost is reminiscent of flesh and i feel like that completely brings this artwork to a different level emphasizing on the meaning of this painting even more I quickly want to explain my next step since I believe it is crucial in the painting's development. I'll be applying a second layer of paint on the back. As you might have noticed, I have already done that on the left arm. Now I understand if you question why I am doing that and probably it looks complete as is. The reason I'm doing that is because I will be focusing more on the colors, structure and the overall appearance. Here is a comparison of the two layers and I think there is quite a lot of difference. Which might not be noticeable from afar but when we go closer it just looks like strokes of paint. And honestly I want the viewer to have a complete experience both from close and a distance. This painting took me around 2 months to complete. I sat down almost every day for 3 to 4 hours. When my paintings take this long, I often get asked where do I get the patience. Until I was questioned about it, I didn't realize how much patience this actually requires. I think patience is extremely important in the creative process. Especially my practice as an artist requires plenty of it. I personally don't feel I need to be patient. It almost naturally comes to me. The desire to make a specific work often overshadows the amount of time required. I focus on the process and mainly how to begin. The rest naturally comes to you as you go by. There can be many things you feel intimidated by before starting. That's when the magic of the process comes in. Things and ideas start falling in place and if there's something that is bothering you, you just give it some time. As an artist, I embrace the patience required because it allows me to truly immerse myself in the work. The canvas becomes my world and with each passing day, I learn more about the colors, the composition and even myself. Patience is the quiet force that empowers me to experiment, make mistakes and learn from them. It's in those instances of waiting, those moments of stepping back and observing, that I find the hidden nuances that give my art depth and meaning. Art is not just about the finished product, it's about the journey, the growth and the transformations that occur along the way. Patience is what transforms a blank canvas into a narrative, a symphony of colors and emotions. It's what turns an initial idea into a masterpiece that speaks volumes. So when people ask me about the patience it takes, I tell them that patience isn't just a virtue. It's a fundamental aspect of my artistic process. It's the quiet dedication that brings every stroke to life, it allows me to create art that resonates with both myself and those who view it.
I decided to make a lion in this painting as a symbol of strength. Being a Leo, a lion has always meant a lot to me. I view it as a representation of the courage I needed. I didn't acquire that courage alone, but through the constant support of my parents. I also see it as a symbol of their protection. To simply describe the process of making it, I began by laying patches of paint to establish the colors, not focusing a lot on the details. And as soon as that layer dried, I used a thin brush to make the hair. More about that will be in the next video. Hey guys, I'm halfway through with my painting and today I'm going to be making these flowers on the edge. These flowers symbolize different things including gratitude, growth, strength, resilience, all these wild flowers which I found with beautiful meanings. I'm going to paint them towards the right hoping that it will look nice. So that is the plan for today. As of now, this is what the painting looks like and I am going to be painting the flowers right here. Before I made this painting, I had created the digital version of it. That in itself was pretty impactful so making an actual painting from that was quite stressful. I know in the last video I talked about self-doubt but before I begin any painting self-doubt kicks in. That's usually because I do not have a certain something figured out or I manage to convince myself painting isn't worth it and I question my life choices. However, sometimes the only way to beat it is actually sitting down with the painting. Yes, with the self-doubt still lingering in your head and just finding solutions to the painting problems or just simply beginning. That's what happened with me when it came to the wildflowers composition. The process was quite difficult since I did not truly really have a reference image which I could replicate since these flowers grow in different regions. I will just be drawing them together because of their symbolism. But here's how I broke down the steps so that they seemed simpler and less intimidating. First was researching about flowers and their symbolism. Then picking the ones that resonated with this painting the most. After that, I did the most unprofessional thing possible. I literally decided the placement of the flowers with some random doodles using my iPhone editing. Yeah, I chose to do that despite knowing Photoshop because anyways, I was going to paint them realistically. Then lastly, I decided to mark in the silhouette of the flowers with solid colors focusing on the details later on. I decided to show as much of my back as I possibly could, sacrificing on a few of these flowers because I think the overall appearance of the back does a much better storytelling than the flowers ever could. Despite this long journey, there is still a lot for me to do with this painting. So I'll be uploading a part 3 of my scoliosis journey. Thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you soon.